right, today I'm still working on the sheriff controllers. What I'm doing is uh, plating parts. So I've already got everything yellowed and come back except for my original my original uh, controller. So today I'm, I'm taking all these parts. I've sandblasted them and cleaned them. And uh, I tried some plating last night and it worked really well. Uh, I'll, sh I'll give you an example here. I started yesterday with a... Let's see if that comes in. With a, an old joystick from a Mario Brothers. Looks like this. Mario Brothers DK3 VS Unisystem. And I took it over to the wire brush and cleaned it up. Removed this little guy. And uh, hung it in a bath of... Uh, Let's see, one quart of um, vinegar and 100 grams of Epsom salts. Mix that together and then uh, use some zinc, um, zinc anodes and a small little battery charger. And here's what I ended up with. Here's, here is the replated part. Looks just like this one. Uh, they were they were two came out of the same VS panel, and wow, what a difference, huh? So anyway, uh, I decided. Well, let me try some of the other parts I had laying around. So, so if uh, if you look here, these are all the parts I've zinked. You know, just uh, just different shafts that were rusty or not plated. And uh, this is an old punch-out shaft that I redid. Super punch-out. And it came out really nice. The nice thing is the ball isn't affected at all by the plating process. So it comes out really clean. Um, let's see. Just to give you an, an, an idea, this is, these are the rings. That came off of those two joysticks I just showed. Completely garbage in there. They cleaned up well on the sandblaster and the uh, and the um, the wire wheel. So uh, so that's what I'm doing today. This just came. All of these have been plated already. I don't know if you can see the difference. This has been plated. The, the one on my right has been plated and the one on the left hasn't. You can see it's a different color. This is bare uh, 12L. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a it's a lead alloy. And this is the this is the shaft after it's been uh, zinced and cleaned. And so I've got to do this one still. And this is my original my original part that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm zinc plating the original controller that I, I built as my proto. And since I didn't send it out to get zinced, I wanted it to have it here to help me assemble the others and whatnot. Um, yeah, so this is this is part of it. This came out of the zinc bath. It was in there 30 minutes. And so then I'll take it to the sandblaster and slightly sand just sandblasted enough to uh, a real light sandblasting not to take the coating back off but to shine it up. Uh, you can use steel wool on these too. In fact, let's see. Uh, basically, let me show you with some steel wool. This is dried now. You just take a little, this is tri triple zero steel wool, and you see how it shines right up. I might not even need to sandblast this, I'll just do this one by hand maybe. Whoops. And so it comes out, it comes out, you can see the difference. This is just the plating. And this is after you hit it with triple lot 
steel wool. It comes out really clean. So the bath is basically, like I said, very simple. I'll show you here. These are these zinc uh, zinc anodes you can get from, um, especially in spring when 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 the uh, water coolers, you know, the swamp coolers are are being serviced. These go inside a swamp cooler as a sacrificial metal, and they're just solid zinc. Uh, they're hooked up here together, and they're just sitting in the in the uh, vinegar with the um, Epsom salt in it, and you can see the part is bubbling. Uh, I've got the negative side of the power supply to this copper copper wire, and it sits across the bath. The part is suspended from some solid core wire, and uh, it's this little teeny power supply here. I just borrowed this off of uh, something else, cut the end off, and it's 7.5 uh, volts at 0.7 amps, and it works. It's worked really well. <clears throat> so uh, I leave these in about a half hour. So this is uh, this is on the way now. This is being done now. And so, yeah, um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. This will go for a half hour. I think it's got 20 minutes left and then we'll pull it out and it should look gray like this other piece. And then all I need to do is buff it up and and it's got zinc and it's protect. So there we go. We'll be right back. It's just vinegar. I might have the radio going on in the shop, but I don't today because, well, I don't want I don't want anyone to get upset with copyright violations or anything. So, it's just sitting here. I'd never done this before, but I've been reading up on it. I bought all the parts to do this oh, a couple years ago. Let's see. And um, never had the guts to plug it in. And last night I just had all these pieces and I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. So that's what I did. I'll probably hit this with the sandblaster. In fact, I'll go do that and then I'll come back and show you the difference. Well, this is interesting. You see here? This is where I hit it with the sandblaster. This, uh, I really need to chromate these afterwards. 
with like a blue zinc chromate because it took it took that right off so I'm gonna have to redo this one yeah this one I'll redo probably should have plated it for an hour instead of a half hour Hey Pete, uh, what we're doing is we're plating some plating some parts today. This is just a zinc plating. Um, I showed earlier, and I'll, I'll show again. Uh, I've done some joysticks that look like this. Hit them with a wire brush and sandblast them, and then put them in for about a half hour into my zinc plater, and. Uh, this is what it looks like when we're done. So it's a nice zinc plating. These were actually down to, you could see like a copper underneath. Um, so they were, anyway, big difference, huh? So there's a nice little um, thin coat of, of uh, zinc on there. And then I've been using triple aught uh, steel wool to shine it up. Uh, because they come out looking like this, this dull gray. So you have to clean these, sandblast them, then uh, degrease. After it's degreased, um, I hit it with the sandblaster, then, then rinse them and degrease them again, and then put them in the bath for about 30 minutes. For these smaller parts, I think I'm going to have to increase the larger parts to maybe an hour because you could see I hit this just barely with the sandblaster and it started to take the, the zinc right back off so um, it didn't do that on these smaller but uh, yeah so they came out pretty good um, I did did all of these last night <clears throat> these are all the controller or these are the uh, shafts for the for the controllers for Sheriff. And um, I built these last week, finally got my little milling uh, attachment for my mini lathe so I could cut this this little groove in the top. And yeah, they, they came out really nice. And so that's what we're looking at. I don't know how, you, how they're gonna help handle um, usage, you know, I think though it'll be interesting to see. Normally I send stuff out to plate. I, di I didn't do that with these shafts, but I did it with um, all the other parts. Let me go grab some of those and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so what I've got in there right now is one of these. This has been zinc plated and then yellow chromated. It came out really pretty. So that's what that's what's in the bath right now. It was just bare metal, so it'll be uh, it'll just be zinc plated. It won't have the yellow chromate. I don't have any in stock at the moment. I will be getting some in and some blue zinc. Uh, chromate also. So that's that piece. Uh, this piece that I'm doing is the same as this piece that I had sent out. 
I, I really like the way these look. They look totally pretty. And so that that's the piece that goes on here, thusly. And then I have these pieces. Here's bare metal. This has been cleaned. I, I need to re-degrease this after I've handled it. But uh, two. And they should end up looking about like this. So you, you can see the difference in the metal color just slightly, but it's enough just to give it some rust protection. Yep. And so, yeah, those are what would be awesome to be able to replicate. And I think I can once I get the, uh, the dip for the um, yellow chromate. Another thing to show you, I, I showed you the difference between those two joysticks. Here's, here's the difference. Let me see. This has been zinced and then um, polished with the triple aught um, steel wool, and this one is just bare metal. I don't know if you can see it. This one's a little, little grayer. This one's a little bit. Uh, well, it looks more like zinc, so this one still needs to be dipped and um, and uh, plated. This one's done. It'll be interesting to see how well they hold up. I think they'll hold up pretty well. And then, this is what really gave me hope was, I showed you this twice, but I'm going to show you one more time. I mean, Look at the difference. This one's just rusty and grimy, and this was the same way. Just took it to a wire wheel and then sandblasted it, and you can see, you know, the scratches in this and everything else. It's down past the finish, um, and it's it's almost a copper color underneath these. I don't know what they were originally made out of, whatever the metal was, and then they were they were I think they were either chromed, probably chromed back then. Um, I, or might have been zinced too, or nickel plated, but but uh, this is just zinc, and boy, I, I really like the way it looks. This one's a, from an old VS Unisystem joystick, and this one is uh, completely done. So there you have it. Restart that timer. That's 30 minutes. I'm going to let this go an hour. Yep, it's kind of like watching uh, paint dry, huh? <laughs> but I can't believe how simple it is. Two ingredients and the zinc anodes. That's all it takes. Um, <clears throat> I know they make plating kits out there. They say, you know, they sell you, you know, some crystals and some other things. I, I think you can do that too. I have the crystals. I, I mean, I, I wanted to try this with just straight, um, straight vinegar and some Epsom salt. And I've been really impressed. I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't know how it's going to hold up, but we'll give it a shot. There's a company out there called Caswell, I think it's Caswell Plating, and they make the, uh, the chromium dips, which I have on order, I don't have them yet, um, but, but they have the dips to make this done. Um, I sent these all out to a, a company in Salt Lake City called uh, Quality Plating, and they first zinc coat, they clean these, they were, they were, they were rusty on the edges and everything else, and they had to clean them, and then uh, when I got these originally, they were in two pieces, so we spot welded them here, and we did the same with this. We spot welded this holder on here, um, and then sent them out to be zinced, and then they dip them in a yellow chromate, and I don't know how long they do that for. Uh, 
to get to achieve this color, but I think it's really beautiful. And then I'll show you the original controller. This is the original controller that we're building. This is for a sheriff. And this is on loan from the Canadian Arcade. Thank you, Chance. And it basically just, uh, there's four, four switches. It activates up to two of them at a time. And then you push, the, push this to activate the fifth micro switch. And that's for fire. So these controllers have a little, a little gap or a little indent there that I had to mill out, and then these fit on, and it holds it going the same direction as the the keyway, the opposite side, so that when you when you spin it when that's tightened down, it it goes, you know, it clicks with the shaft. I had to make these two. Um, I molded this one and I've got a bunch, I just don't have them all. I have to drill mine out still and put an insert in there, a 6mm insert, and uh, add the um, set screw. I've done one of them. Uh, but I don't have it, I don't have it, it's in the other room at the moment. So nothing's going to happen here, it's just going to bubble and then we'll pull it out and see how it looks. Alright, let me put these back. So in the next few days, if, as, if this goes right, I have all the pieces to start assembling these. And uh, everybody who wanted one, um, who put their name on the original list, is going to be notified and uh, we'll give them the... The total with shipping, and um, and then we'll we'll start sending them out here in the next week or two. I'll build a couple at a time and test them, and then send them out. Oh, I also also have these little guys yellow zinced. You know, which are the same as, as the, these. These are little bearing, I guess, bearing guides or bearing holders. What happens is these are, they're screwed to this plate, right? And then there's a spring in here, and a ball bearing sits in here. And then they, uh, uh, Eight-sided uh, gear sits in the middle, and when you flip the, um, rotate the dial, it, it'll, it'll lock into place at every, every uh, indent. And there's two of them, one on each side. This is an interesting controller. I think they made the same type of thing for, oh, Frontline, uh, Sheriff, of course. Uh, Bandito and a couple other uh, Tato games. Yeah, I think I have a Tato version here somewhere. Let me go see if I can find that. I think this is from a front line. Same basic controller. You push down and it does that micro switch. As you spin it, uh, these different, up to two of them at a time, are depressed. And uh, you can see that mechanism I was just talking about right here on, a, on, on a, the Nintendo controller, it's below the base plate. But you have these two little cylinders with springs and two bearings in it and an eight-sided gear that 
when you move it around it moves it moves a uh, it moves a cam and this cam can only press up to two micro switches at a time so it one two three and it you know it, it'll move around to eight eight ways and there's the same same gear in here it's just different sheet metal but the parts are pretty much the same um, so I don't see why I couldn't make these either one day first we're gonna do sheriff and see where those go so that's what the the front line controller looks like I think that's what it came out of could have been Tin Star, I think, used the same controller too, and I'm not sure what else used the Tato controller. Some of you guys say Taito, I say Tato. You know, Tato, Taito, it's like potato, potato, right? I guess we'd have to ask someone from Japan how to say it. Tracy, you said your video hung. It's it's still uh, it's still going here. So they say you're really supposed to use a bubbler with this, you know. I don't know. As long as you don't touch the anodes to the. Uh, To the work you're going to be okay but they say the bubbles if they sit there that part won't plate I, I guess that's probably true so it probably should be agitated oops So it smells like ammonia in here. Not ammonia, uh, vinegar, but that's it's just vinegar and Epsom salt and zinc. So there's there's nothing here to hurt you. Hi, I'm using zinc, and these are just um, these are just standard steel um, cold cold road plate that have been um, molded into the parts. Uh, the shafts are a lead loy. I think they're 12L14, and they were all uh, cut. I, I got the basic stock. In and then I had to, I had to uh, <clears throat> cut the ends, put the groove, and um, mill the the little indent here at the top for the set screw. And um, that's it. It's, like I said, it was a real simple. It's a real simple plating solution. We'll see how it's done. Yeah, John, the. Um, the chromium or the yellow plating is done exactly the same. This process is done, then you polish it, and then this is just dipped into a a yellow chromate solution. And that yellow chromate is um, you can get it from Caswell plating. It comes in like a 
a four ounce bottle and each each uh, ounce will make a gallon of the stuff I think it is and um, <clears throat> you just dip it for 15 20 seconds take it out you know, take it out after this has been done I can do that with the blue or the or the chromate the yellow chromate and then you um, you rinse it with distilled water uh, and and you can you know but before you rinse it you you uh, I guess you dry it with heat and then re-rinse it with distilled water and it's plated that's my understanding. I haven't done any plate of the uh, the um, yellow chromate or the um, blue zinc, which is kind of a hardener. It's an extra coat, I guess. Um, but uh, once I get my solution in, we'll we'll give that a shot. It'll be kind of fun to try. Well, I think that's it for the plating. I did I did show this for just a minute. I don't know if you guys caught that. I saw a lot of people dropped and then came back in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be it's real simple, Tracy. Um I don't know how well this is going to hold up yet. So, this is my first attempt. I did this last night. Um, I've been wanting to do it for several years. Um, I read so many things that made it just so difficult and saying that how hard it was and, um, you know, all the chemicals and stuff you needed. And it turns out that I watched, I watched a couple of YouTube videos that said, Hey, use, use vinegar and throw some Epsom salt in there. Or the guy was using table salt and, uh, you know, a little wall wart and, um, and go for it. And I thought, well, now, by the way, these clips do nothing except hold the uh, hold the zinc, you know, these these zinc things away from the part, and that's all they're there for. But I was plating in this, just a, you know, like I think this had nuts in it originally, and this is what I was using. You can see the the line. One quart is what I've been using, and then today I needed something larger, so I just took a. This is a a milk container. It's for it had distilled water in it. I cut it in half so I could get my my larger plate in there and had room for the anodes. Plugged it in and that's where it goes. So but I mean this was what really excited me was was this the difference here. I mean just just amazing. And so there's no there's no excuse anymore to for for uh not not doing these, you know, not restoring these, unless they're so far grooved that they're just not worth it anymore. But even if they are, you can stick them on the lathe and and uh, smooth them out and restore them to something that looks, you know, looks like this, which is very nice. And, uh, you know, hey, if the plating doesn't hold up, uh, you can re-zinc it later. Very simple, half hour. Um, so, yep, I th I've got a ton of sticks I'm going to do this with, and I'm going to try it with some of the other little parts, you know, off of these that are rusty, see if I can, uh, you know, clean them up, lay them and smooth them and then refurbish them and then sell the, sell sticks. You know, I, I've had a lot of, st we, we've remanufactured the sticks. We've been doing it for since about 2000 and I think 2008 was the first time we did a run of sticks, you know, the entire joystick, but, uh, it should be really simple. You know, I see a lot of people, they take, they take the original joysticks, the Nintendo sticks, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll wire brush them off and then turn around and sell them that way. Well, you know, if there's no coating or clear on it or anything, they're going to rust. So they need to be either plated or hit with a, you know, a clear lacquer or something to keep them from rusting after they've been, uh, you know, the rust removed and cleaned. So this might be a fun option to try. Any rule of thumb on the voltage needed? Yeah, um, 
I don't know about the size of the anodes. Um, you're supposed there's some ways to calculate it. I, I put my, you know, this is a seven and a half, seven and a half volt uh, wall wart, and it puts out a half an amp, or uh, excuse me, 0.7 amps. So it's 7.5 volts DC. Um, you know, you put your your positive leads go on the on the zinc and then your negative lead here is clipped to the wire that's suspending the uh, the uh, parts and I found that when I test it I get about two and a half volts where's my meter two and a half to three volts I end up with between this piece of copper and the red clip um, coming out of the power supply. So it seems pretty good. Like I said, the, I started with one quart of uh, vinegar and added 100 grams of Epsom salt. They also say that you can add some uh, a brightener. Let's see. Uh, they recommend this stuff. For brightener, you put a teaspoon of this in and mix it, or or even a little more. Um, I didn't put any in. Uh, I haven't tried it. It's supposed to be a brightener, and I tried to read up on brighteners, and I, I'm, I'm just a little confused with what that's supposed to do exactly. It talks about aligning zinc molecules, and it, that's like way beyond me. So... <laughs> um, I'm more practical. I just want to see it work and then, uh, you know, it will work. Yeah, I think you could. Uh, I think you could could plate the base of a Nintendo joystick with the bearing. Oh, yeah, with the bearing inside, no problem. Because, you know, the, the originals, they just, they just rattle around in there. They're not snug. They're not super tight. Um, so, yeah, you, you can actually, after you clean them out, degrease them and everything you can you can shake them and hear hear it rattle so i think there's enough room in there you could plate as long as you get it clean get it degreased well dry them thoroughly um you know sandblast them or etch them they say you can etch it by dipping it in a bath of uh was it muratic acid um i didn't want to go that far so i've just i'm using 409 or simple green to degrease and then uh, and then rinse it with tap water, thoroughly dry it um, after I've sandblasted everything, and then uh, it seems to seems to be working well. I, we'll see how well it attaches. This is going to be for an hour. Um, I did it for. It's been about forty minutes. It's been in the bath, so um, it's kind of interesting. I can see it's plating really well on the sides, but in the center, I don't know how well it's actually plating. So this is a this is a first attempt at something that large, but it worked really well on the shafts. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let this go and then uh, try to clean it up, and maybe I'll post some pictures of how it comes out if it if it comes out well. If not, um. I'll revise my my method and try something else. But, uh, you know, a, a thin coat of zinc will definitely keep the rust off of these things. And that's all I really need. Okay, thanks everyone for joining in. You have a great day.